I'm, I want to ask you another question, though. It's a little bit of a pivot, but not totally. Um, so would you be willing to apply a little bit of this conversation around certainty to politics, certainty and identity? Mm. Um, and like what your thoughts are around or what your experience is around um, the divisiveness that's happening right now? It exhibits how extremely unhealthy it, it can get when people uh, are believing their thinking. Mm. And when that is challenged, they double down on believing their thinking. Yeah. So that um, there's like the, the ladder of consciousness and like when they're like lower down, um, a typical, it's typical to be reactive further down where you react by getting even more entrenched, making um, your position even more important. And it's a, a lot more about being right. There's a lot more us, them, which is like why there's so much polarization. And there's like, like we're good, they're evil. Hmm. And I see that like even amongst a lot of the uh, more spiritual progressive audience as well, there's still a lot of divisiveness. There's still a lot of, well, they are clearly wrong. Mm -hmm. Like this is clearly horrible and we should be angry and afraid. Yeah. Um, not realizing, so like there's a lot of the, like the Cartman drama triangle going on, especially yeah. within politics. It's like clear as day to me where even there's a lot of rescuers going on. It's like, okay, we need to save everyone from this. Not recognizing when people are reacting, they're not recognizing that they're playing into the system that they're reacting to, that their reaction, even though they're like there's different parties and there's different positions and ideas, but because they're reacting, that's part of why the system is there in place. Yes. And it's not a call to do nothing, but it is a call to, for example, like when you're afraid, don't make decisions then. Um, when you're really triggered about politics, it's probably not a good time to be taking action within politics. Mm -hmm. Like find enough perspective so that there's compassion and understanding for what's going on, why it's going on, how the system is working. And only then is there going to be enough like perspective to have some new ideas about what to do next. Do you, uh, are you a Ken Wilber guy? I was for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the theory of everything was one of the books that changed my way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I still think of it as like the goal uh, or one of the goals is like to be more and more integral, to include more and more perspectives. Yeah. And, uh, and I loved his harping on the, the, the mean green meme. Yeah. Do you want to explain that? Uh, like the, the level of consciousness where it's really like we're, we're believing in everyone has a right to their opinion. Um, as long as everyone believes that everyone has a right to their opinion. Totally. So the people who are in earlier stages of like rational or power oriented, they're all wrong, <laughs> but we're right. right in saying that everyone deserves some, uh, that everyone is right. Yeah. 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 Totally. I remember when we moved away from Connecticut and we moved to California and I, I do really love living in California. So this is meant, with this is said with love, but um, I, I right away I noticed this. I said, "Wow, everyone around here is so tolerant of everything except for intolerance." <laughs> <laughs> like yes, you know. And uh, but then, man, if you're not tolerant, whoo, you are dirt. You are scum of the earth. You are like the worst of the worst. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and I always just think that it's so, I, I really do feel like this is something that we have to be bringing out into the conversation, the collective conversation that, you know, we cannot meet hate with hate. Mm -hmm. You know, we cannot be, we, we, well, we will, can, it just doesn't help. Well, we can, but, right. We do. <laughs> we can and we do. We very successfully have been. We have yeah. been. <laughs> right. Like and whenever so we're in a reactive state there's more non-doing that's being 
called for. <laughs> yeah, like the more you think you have to do something, it's probably a sign that it's not the time to do something. When you realize you don't have to do anything, it might occur to you to do some amazing things. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. like, the, like the one thing that I would want, which probably some of the fixation at the integral level, um, I, I'd like for people to be operating from higher consciousness. Yeah. to have a higher perspective and like the higher up they go the the more informed the more um helpful the more miraculous their their actions will be so it's not a call for passivity um but it is a call for non-reactivity yeah yeah there's a way that i think the reactivity has runs the risk of causing more harm and unintended consequences that if you're going to advocate, say, for someone that you're considering the impact of your advocacy work on the other humans in the world, and you're not just zero sum gaming it, you know? Yeah. One way I would describe that is um, taking these larger processes personally. And like there's two different meanings of taking it personally. There's like one, just one of the four agreements, don't take anything personally. That's one of the paths to enlightenment. Don't take anything personally. Nothing is personal. Yeah. So you could just like let go of all attachments. But there's also the path of take everything personally. Mm. Like um, one of the images I actually love is like uh, get that you are the, the earth. Mm. That... Like the, the air is your, your lungs, like the earth, earth is your body. Um, getting that perspective, the, the reality of that. And there, it's just like, oh, whew. like there's a greater truth there. There's much bigger patterns. And that informs uh, how you are with the world. Uh, when we separate ourselves from people, it's like if it, any version of not my problem, Sometimes like that's a good protection because sometimes like I need to protect this physical human being or I need to protect like some level of well-being or just my, my family. Like, like we create bubbles sort of out of necessity and that's really healthy. But as we're doing better, as we have more capacity, as we're going up Maslow's hierarchy and like, beyond Maslow's hierarchy, expand to include like um, what's the impact of our business on our employees? What's the impact of our business on other businesses on uh, the local scene on the, the planet yeah. on like um, humanity on like life and uh, with expanding perspective um, you, yeah it's like with a higher perspective you just come up with better how ideas we, yes how do we get to that place because if people aren't awake you know we're trying really hard to sort of force that companies, organizations, individuals wake up and see the impacts of their decisions on other people and on the planet. But I mean, can we do this from the outside in? Does that help? Can we do outside in and inside out? You know, and I don't know, like, is that something you want to talk <laughs> about for a minute or two? Or do you want to? As, as far as I've seen, it can only work from the inside out. Like our experience only works from the inside out. Um, our leverage into influencing the world only works from the inside out. We can only imagine how we might want to interact with the world, what we might want to create from the world, beginning with the inside. When it's outside in, that makes us more of a, like a, a passive, like being at effect to everything. Um, it might be a great excuse to complain about things or it might tell interesting stories but we're no longer creators when we're thinking outside in. Yeah. We're creators when we're thinking inside out. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> no, high five.